I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of the people who doesn't want to cook, although I'm sure that our next presenter is going to definitely inspire me. And um, her name is Carolyn Eddy, and many of you know her. She owns Carolyn's Absolutely Fabulous Events, and she is sharing ideas for creating healthy and delicious breakfasts using that old staple oatmeal. So through her work at Carolyn's Absolutely Fabulous Events, she offers bespoke catering in the lower Fairfield County area. And you can learn more about her offerings at Carolyn's Absolutely Fabulous Events or through her Instagram, which I love, uh, Carolyn's Fab Foods. So um, if you've been at Haven, you've tasted her foods or seen the presentation, it's so amazing. Um, take it away, Carolyn, show us what you have today. All right, um, thanks Amy for that presentation. I'm trying to see if I can get on the big screen. Can you all hear me? So guys, you can do speaker view. Just make sure you're on speaker view so you can see the speaker. Right. This is me being a newbie here. Oh, go away, all these little messages coming up. Oh, shoot. No, I think I've just, I've just, I think I've just come off Zoom. I'm trying to do something. Let me turn the notifications off. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Just let me just do this. Okay, sorry guys, got the technical problem there. Right, so this morning we're not going to do much way of cooking, but I am going to introduce you to that fabulous Scottish um, staple oatmeal. And we're going to do like oatmeal three different ways. Now, I have to confess that growing up in Scotland, um, most <laughs> oatmeal or porridge was basically um, oatmeal, water, a little bit of salt, and if you were feeling generous, you can be put a little bit of milk over it. So it was never my favorite uh, breakfast. But then when I came to Darianne, one of my friends invited me around and she like, she did this like soup, soup top version of, of, of oatmeal or porridge and she put fruit and yogurt and nuts and a little bit of maple syrup on it. And it was like a completely different uh, animal. So it became one of our staples for here. And what was quite sweet was when my husband was traveling to work, uh, both here and when we used to live in Copenhagen, I would actually send him off to work every morning with a little thermos flask with oatmeal, and then I put all the different toppings on. So that was always, and I think if, you, if anybody follows me on Instagram, that was my Instagram account at one stage. I've now moved on to what I serve my husband for lunch, but it used to be what I serve him for breakfast. So that's one thing. And then when we got to the, UK, uh, the US, we were, uh, Copenhagen, we were traveling one day, and we went through Switzerland, and my husband picked up this, um, you know, something from the, like, the deli at the, at the airport, and it was like this birch muesli, and I was, he was going, love Berkshire and Muesli and I'm thinking excuse me but why why haven't I heard about that it's what we now know here in the U.S. as overnight oats which has become like really popular everywhere but seriously I had no idea it existed until about three years ago so we transitioned from making little pots of oatmeal to little pots of overnight oats now I will say most of the overnight oats were more like two hour oats because for some reason I could never remember to do them at night so I would only ever do them first thing in the morning and again he would go off in Copenhagen on his bike with his little thermos. And the third thing we're going to talk about with oats is I have just got into homemade granola. So these are all really simple things guys I, I hear you saying about cooking I'm even I am fed up with cooking okay because it just never ends. Breakfast, a little bit more fun, healthy, but I'm a big believer in um, that half the battle is eating real food with real ingredients. So I'm going to show you how to put things together and um, maybe make them a little bit more interesting as well. So the first thing we're going to start off with, and I've just got some oatmeal here, and this is just plain oatmeal with water, but you can put milk in it. Um, and again, this was something that we did when Catherine was rowing. She used to row at university uh, when she was at high school. And one of the things that we were allowed to feed the girls when we went off to regattas was oatmeal. And then what they would do was just put all sorts of toppings. So I'm just going to take a bowl of oatmeal and we are going to put a little bit of Greek yogurt. Now Greek yogurt's brilliant because it's got protein in it. Um, and then I'm going to do something slightly different with this one because also in Copenhagen, they had all these fabulous different um, types of shops that I'd never heard of before. And one of them was called Graal, which is Danish for porridge. And they made all sorts of different things. So again, my eyes were opened. And one of the ones that they did was they took bananas, 
again, carbs for all that. Sorry, I did, I did the workout. I did, part, I did the warm up for the workout, but I've already run this morning, so I gave myself a little off. And I have made some homemade caramel sauce. So I'm not saying that we use a lot of it, but I'm talking just a little drizzle. So just something to sweeten up the oatmeal. And then just to finish that off, I've got some dark chocolate and, and my favorite dark chocolate. It's Trader Joe's. It's fabulous bars. So as we know, we're allowed a little dark chocolate that's meant to be very healthy for us. And um, so I've just, I've just grated that. And for that, I just use um, a potato peeler or you could just use a knife. And we're just gonna cut into a little bit. So I know it looks a little bit more like dessert, but that is one option for oatmeal. So that's bananas, a little bit of caramel, um, caramel sauce, Greek yogurt and chocolate. Um, I like that one. So the next thing we're going to look at, and what I'm going to say, guys, is if you follow me in Carolyn's Fab Foods, um, I will post all the recipes and I will give uh, the guys at Hayden recipes as well. So you don't need to worry about it. But I mean, most of my things aren't really recipes. They're more just throwing things together. Overnight oats. And like I say, this is more of a three-hour oats because I suddenly re realized I hadn't done it. But... And the other thing as well is I, I make them daily. This is the sort of thing you could make the beginning of the week and then just use what you need. So again, very, very simple. You take some oats and I, for most of the time, I just use these um, oats, the regular uh, rolled oats, the whole grain ones. I did discover that Palmer's have got Scottish oatmeal and this is a much finer grain. I will say it makes really, really, really nice overnight oats, but it's, it's a bit tricky to, to kind of pin, pin down, but that's Bob's Red Mill oatmeal. So for most of the time I just use this, the stuff you pick up in Whole Foods or Stop and Shop or Trader Joe's. And to that, let me show you how easy this is to make. Okay, this, is, this is not really a recipe. I just put a little bit, and I tend to eyeball it, a little bit of oatmeal. And what you can do as well is, um, and this is, a, this is a mix, but you can add in um, like hemp seeds and chia. Uh, and I got this one, I just found this, my daughter's really into health food. So that's actually a chia and flax mix that um, Whole Foods do. And you can, buy all, you can buy these seeds anywhere these days. And you can just put a little bit of that in too. And then to that, I'm using almond milk. And you can use almond milk, or in fact, let me use oat milk, it's nice too. So oat milk, so any of that, like the, the dairy free, you could use ordinary milk as well, and sometimes you can put apple juice or orange juice, but I tend to just stick with, so just put enough in to cover it. To cover it. Um, Give it a little stir. And then that just sits and the oats absorb the liquid. Um, so that's just what you make and you can put that again in the fridge the night before. This, um, this concept, which is in the, like in Europe is known as Bircher muesli, was um, pioneered by uh, Dr. Bircher who ran like a sort of health, one of your original health farms in Switzerland. And he used to have all sorts of things like, like grated apple and nuts and, and you know, um, I think apple juice went into his original recipe. But uh, so that's the base of it there. And I'm going to just put that to one side because that best tradition, I have some that I started earlier. And again, you could actually just even leave them in these jars. These are kind of super cute as you recognize them from the, uh, the jam jars. But with this one, I am going to do just a little bit. So my favorite toppings for this would be fresh fruit. I would then again put a little bit of Greek yogurt and if you're trying to avoid dairy, you could use um, some of like the excellent coconut yo yogurts that they do. Um, but here, this time of the year, one of the things I love to do is um, take plums. So these are some plums that I had earlier in the week and uh, I just, um, 
And one of the things I like doing with this is you can control the sugar. So I just cut the plums up and added just a, enough sugar to start caramelizing them, but not so much. So they're still quite tart. Um, it's probably enough. So I've done that with plums. I've done that with peaches. So I just have these in the fridge. And yesterday when I went to look at my fresh fruit for this demonstration tonight, I discovered my strawberries. At this time of the year, it seems to be they last about a day in the fridge. So I've done the same with strawberries. So I've just taken them, if you can see them here. Um, I've just taken them, again, just a tiny little bit of sugar and turned them into a syrup. And these should stay um, good in the fridge for like, you know, three or four days. So you can batch all that, then just put them away. So with this one, the plum, we can choose a syrup. And again, you have many, many choices. There's a agave syrup would be quite nice. Um, a friend has just gifted me a blueberry syrup. Um, and you don't have to put syrup. This is probably actually sweet enough on its own. Um, I'm a big lover of um, maple syrup. And it's just a little, just again, a little touch of sweetness. And then I like to finish off with some nuts. Oh, and I was forgetting, you could say with the porridge, you could put some nuts on too. So here I have just, again, Trader Joe's excellent source of nuts. You've got the, um, the regular almonds. You've got, I use these honey toasted ones all the time. And one of my own personal favorites is the candied pecans. And I'm just put a little bit of nuts over that. And there we are, very, very straightforward, very, very simple, two incredibly healthy breakfast. My husband has a choice this morning. Um, how are we doing for time? Plenty of time. I can't hear anyone. Um, so the last we thing- still have a couple minutes. Okay. Well, the last thing I was just gonna mention is I have just made granola for the first time. I discovered it's really, really easy. And one of the reasons I did it was because, I don't know, you, after Bare Naked became terribly successful in, in the Darien, um, a small company that started in their garage and then went, went to be bought out by Kellogg's for about 8 million. Everybody is making granola now. So you go into the stores and there's like a whole aisle. And yet, honestly, I can never find one that I want because they have cinnamon in it or they have vanilla or they have too many nuts or I, there's, there's just... So the solution, make your own. So I did that this morning while we were just setting up. And I've discovered, let me clear this stuff out of the way. I've discovered that the basis of granola is a base recipe with just a few ingredients. And after that, you can add anything that you want. So I'm gonna again put all this recipes here. This is just a mix of again, our wonderful um, Scottish favorite, oatmeal. Uh, and then this has got some, uh, shredded coconut in it. And the first time I tried it, I put the, the nuts in at the same time, but I find that they, they caught really easily and they burnt. So I, I'm gonna add, in fact, I'm gonna add these honey roasted nuts afterwards, because I think that, you know, they, they've already been cooked by Trader Joe's, so they're all done. Um, and I'm going to, so you mix that with some oil, and again, your choice of sweetener, I use maple syrup. And at the end, you can now put, on, put in anything else that you want. So dates, apricots, any other dried fruit you want, and nuts. And um, I think Teresa had some of this earlier. Anyway, so that's it. So again, if you don't want to put nuts on top of your, your breakfast cereal, a little bit of homemade granola. Are we done? Wow. Yeah, that was fabulous. <laughs> Not to use your word. <laughs> And if it's any of you got any questions, sorry, I feel very honored to be part of this. I'm not quite sure I really fall into the healthy category, but I do, I do have this thing that if you just eat food, just, just like buy food and just cook food and you don't need to do anything. As soon as you start going down the process route, you're just, you know. <laughs> Carolyn, we do have a question from Moira. Um, do you recommend steel cut Irish oats or regular rolled oats, which hold up better with the texture for overnight oats? For overnight oats, um, you know, the steel cut is something that I've not been used to because that's definitely, Ireland does this with Scotland. I, it, Ireland takes all the things that Scotland does and just makes them fun. You know, we get, so you go into the store and it's Irish oats. Excuse me, excuse me. It's Scottish oats we should be looking for. Um, I... I have never made it with the steel cut oats, to be honest, because they require like about three hours of cooking. 
Um, but, you know, so I'm not convinced that they're soft, but if you try them, let me know. I, and I tend to just use this little bit of stuff here because it seems to be a bit more straightforward. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend, probably wouldn't recommend it, but if that's all you had, they probably are just going to take a little bit longer to, to soak. Okay, great. Any other questions, Britton? I don't see any. No, we're good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay, who's hungry out there now? <laughs> I, when you did the first one, I'm like, I want that one. Then the second one, I'm like, no, no, I want that. No, I want the granola. Okay. Uh, it's a good thing we did the workout, right? So um, thank you so much. Post-workout food. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Carolyn. Um,